So I was at this retreat a few months ago in the backwoods of Alabama on Smith Lake, and I decided to go for a run. And as I'm out there jogging up and down the hills, going past all these lakefront properties, I'm noticing some similarities around me, okay? Not anything I'm uncomfortable with, but just noticing some things around the lake. There's lots of American flags. There's lots of Trump Pence flags. There's lots of memorabilia and things that just remind you of absolute conservatism, but I was just noticing this repeatedly. So I, I go over this hill and come around a little curve and I see this sign plastered on a tree. This, I'm gonna put a photo of this because I literally stopped and took a picture. It's gonna look photoshopped. I, I promise you this is the picture that I took and it said free. My mind was just filling in the gaps. I'd seen all these other signs and now I see this sign that just says free. And I think this person really loves their freedom. You know, I can't blame them, I love my freedom. And so as I crest the hill and I get a little bit closer, I begin to notice that there are all these items underneath this sign. This person was not talking about political freedom or freedom to do whatever you want. It was like free items, like come take this stuff. We're trying to get rid of it. And I, I literally just laughed out loud. My point in this telling this story is that our minds are so quick to fill in gaps. Our minds are so adept at taking an incomplete picture and making a complete picture of it. Although it's a caricature of reality, our minds are just trying to make sense out of what it is that we're seeing in the world in which we live and operate. And I can't help but think that there are components of that that were just a normal part of survival, you know, a thousand years ago, are now attuned to so many things. As we look around our world and we see people in our world, our minds very quickly fill in the gaps. And it's extremely important for us to understand the kind of judgments that we make sometimes on an absolute hourly basis as we go throughout our world and as we see people in the world that it is very easy to judge people. These judgments just happen at lightning speed. And the judgments themselves tell us more about ourselves than they do about the other person. We literally train our minds. We tell ourselves stories about people that are a part of our wiring that is how we fill in gaps about the people we see. Choose to wire your mind carefully. Choose in the conversation you have around your children about other people that you help them wire their mind lovingly, considerately, and carefully. The way you talk about strangers, the way you talk about people's appearance, the way you talk about their, their weight is an absolute sign of what is going on inside of your own self. One person sees this one guy and he attributes absolute positivity and goodwill. Even though you don't know the person, there is an expectation of positivity and goodness. Another person sees the exact same person and expects catastrophe. They expect to be backstabbed. They expect, expect it to be like stolen from or something like that. With two completely different sets of assumptions about the very same person, it's more about us than it is about them. I had a professor in seminary who would say, let your judgments be gentle. Let your judgments be gentle. He was a counseling professor, and the reason he would say that was because he had counseled with so many people that he knew that the thing that we see out in public, and we say, well, that's really crazy, or that's really messed up, or I can't believe that that person said that or did that, makes an awful lot more sense when you get to know them. There was a client that I had when I was in clinical psychology who was a young child, and um, every single day when she would poop, she would take the poop and she would smear it on the wall. And she would laugh and she would say, look, mom, I'm finger painting. And the mom was furious about this. She, she wanted this behavior absolutely extinguished, absolutely gone. This, this was not acceptable. Well, the more we talked to the mother, we found out that the first time this kid did this, that the mom laughed and said, look, you're finger painting, which was a huge mistake because now all this kid wanted, was trying to do was make mom laugh. She was just trying to make mom happy. You look at the behavior and say, wow, that's crazy. Like this kid must be really messed up. But the mom did some things that caused that. Like even just crazy behavior makes sense in its own context. Every single person you meet has a context and we don't know their context. We don't know their situation. You see someone who is homeless and you don't know all the ways that they tried to not be put in that situation. All the things that they did to not lose that job, to not end up on that park bench, to not end up not able to have identification, to be able to find new employment. And we look at them as just very quick just to say, oh, that person, they just must be lazy or they're unwilling or they're an addict or whatever the case may be. But we don't know their whole story. Let your judgments be gentle. Take suspicion and turn it into curiosity. Suspicion very quickly will fill in gaps with judgment and negativity. But curiosity 
will not fill in the gaps. Curiosity will begin asking questions, will be a get to know you, get to appreciate you, love you, and respect you. And so our minds make caricatures of people all the time. If you go out to a place in public and there's someone who's drawing caricatures of people, you know if you've ever had this done to you or about you, that they accentuate different features of what is already accentuated in reality. We do this all the time socially with the people we encounter as we fill in gaps of our knowledge about them. We are forming caricatures because it's a lot easier to form a caricature of someone than to deal with a real person. Caricatures fit our mold of expectation when reality doesn't. And so are we going to do our due diligence and get to know real people? Or are we going to continue just to fill in gaps about people of made up assumptions that come more from our own upbringing and, and our own cognition than in our own suspicions, our own biases than it does from reality. You know, caricatures are a lot easier to defeat or tear down in an argument than real people are. And what we're really doing is we're making judgments about people. When you go to the Bible and you look up what judgment is all about, judgment is all about justice. And when we make up negative things about people and hold that against them as if it's reality, and we fill in the gaps and make caricatures of people, we are not doing them justice. God is a God who wants justice taking assumptions and treating them as fact and holding them against people who we don't even know is not just. We get to decide whether or not we fill in the gaps with goodness and goodwill and curiosity, or whether or not we get to fill in the gaps with harsh judgmental negativity. So here's what this looks like or sounds like this in debate, either in person or on social media. You are only saying that because, well, you really don't know that, do you? You really don't know why they're saying that. Maybe you could ask why they're saying that. Or maybe you say something like, People like you, dot, dot, dot. These are not even people you've met. You have no idea why they're saying what they're saying. Why don't you have a healthy curiosity and ask them? Or someone might say something like, you only say that because you don't really care about the Bible. That's absolute code word for, I think you don't agree with the Bible because you don't agree with me. Because if you agreed with me, that would mean that you agreed with the Bible. If you agreed with me, that means you would agree with the truth because I hold the truth and clearly you don't. So how have you seen or heard this demonstrated out there in the world? So what are some things you've heard and seen, maybe even of your own self, that have demonstrated an unwillingness to get to know someone for who they are when well, your judgments weren't very gentle? In James chapter 1, 19 through 21, it says this, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. It is amazing just how angry we can get at strangers. Just how upset we can get with someone who doesn't accept what we're saying. And we begin to demonize them and caricature them and back them into a hole uh, built and, and surrounded by our, our own negative assumptions that we have created and placed upon them, which is not justice or righteousness or holiness. It's so crazy that we can allow strangers to get so far under our skin. And maybe what James is telling us is, if you are quick to become angry, maybe there is something within you that needs to die or go away or be dealt with. Maybe that's a sign of your own and my own unrighteousness. In Romans 14, he literally says, you gotta stop passing judgment on each other because God truly is the judge, and your brother or your sister do not stand or fall before you, they stand or fall before the Lord. And so do not pass judgment on disputable matters. We need to have enough spiritual maturity and discernment to understand that some things matter and other things really just don't. And the way you can tell the difference is if the Bible makes a big deal out of it or it doesn't. So let your judgments be gentle. You never know someone's story until you get to know their story. Take them one at a time. Treat them with love and respect. Assume goodwill and goodness and show mercy and let them prove you wrong. But then at least you know. And rather than come at people with suspicion, with an us versus them, with the sense of otherness versus us, the, we're the good people on the good guys team versus those other people who disagree, who clearly don't care about the Bible and are only saying that because I can read their mind and convert your suspicion into absolute curiosity. And in all things, let us be humble and kind. You will never go wrong with love. God bless. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like this, hit thumbs up. Let us know it's working and check out another video or two. You take care.